presentation will take exactly seven minutes, no longer. <laughs> uh, Terra Morzana is a collaboration between municipalities, universities, museums, heritage sites, and citizens. Cities involved are, for instance, Liège, Aachen, Jullich, Heerlen, Tongeren, and Maastricht, all cities in the direct surroundings. And the University of Liège has the lead in this project. Goal is to do research and to explain the common history and the shared identity of some major cities of the Euregio Meuse Rhine. The Euregio Meuse Rhine is situated in the border area of the Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany, and you are at this moment at the heart of it, in which three languages are spoken, being spoken, and a variety of dialects. Terra Mozana will construct and write new storylines make 3D scans of existing remains, that is archaeological remains, churches and town halls. Terramozana will reconstruct models by combining new storyline and freshly made 3D scans. It will compose films, exhibitions, make augmented and virtual reality products, and also do research on ethics, user rights, techniques, sustainable storage, and future use. The focus on this short presentation will be how will Terra Mozana come to write new storylines. Terra Mozana will focus on the connections, on the relationships and the interdependencies between cities. And we will use the historical 3D matrix model. Terra Mozana will use a framework based on research and a network based on knowledge and personal involvement. This is a picture of the historical 3D matrix model, which I've developed and which you are not able to read. But that's OK, and I will explain. I call this a model because it is based on an approach, a way of thinking, and is not a fill-in form. It's very simple, but very effective. In this matrix, three axes are present. The first X is geographically based. For instance, cities as Maastricht, Aguilier, and Tongera are summed up. The second X is, a chrono is chronologically based and divided into historical distinctive periods. The third X and the third dimension is theme-based, for instance, geomorphology, economy, politics, society, or language. Each cell requires selected information, and at the end of the line, the interdependencies and conclusions are being summed up. By using this model, it is important to let go of the usual conventions, use proven facts and figures only, and let new insights emerge. The principles of the model are use not as much information as possible, and today we are talking about data, big data, and even more data, but now it is uh, usable to uh, use not as much information as possible, but as little as possible. Be selective. Select your information on specificness and distinctiveness. Think about what is really distinctive and leave the rest of the information for the moment. And then focus and describe the interconnectivity, the relationships and the comp complementarity amongst places and themes in time and based on these distinctiveness. <coughs> Using this approach, try to describe, firstly, what are the distinctive features for Maastricht in, for instance, Roman times, based on, for instance, trade. Start with a long list and then create a short list of what is really distinctive. Be selective. And what are those of Heerle, Aachen, and Liège? The first result cell then will show the composed distinctive features of the Euregio in Roman times on trade, or any aspect, any other aspect you chose. Secondly, now that we have the Roman result, then describe what are the distinctive features in Merovingian times, in Carolingian times, in late medieval times, etc. The second result cell will show the composed distinctive features of the whole Euregio on trade, infrastructure, etc. through time. And then thirdly, the third result cell describes, when all the cells are completed, the shared history and the common identity of the Euregio in its completeness, based on the selective and distinctive elements. Using this model, following aspects have to be stressed. Really focused on distinctiveness through time, the specific historical identity of each city will appear. 
By reducing information, the picture becomes clearer instead of blurred by an overdose of information. After reconstructing, the reduced information and its conclusions and consequences should be checked and checked again, especially with the omitted information. I would like to give one example. Several books have been written on the Roman city of Maastricht, with its roads, graves, a sanctuary, a bridge, a thermal basing complex, houses, fortifications, sculpture fragments, and many, many finds. But Maastricht was not a Roman city, it was a small Roman settlement with a special function. In fact, Maastricht can best be described, when approached using the historical 3D matrix model, as a settlement with only one distinctive feature, and that is the combination of a road and a bridge, and one specific function, and it was that Maastricht served as a harbour or port for Tongeren to the west and Aachen and Heerlen to the east. Further information is unnecessary for this analysis and blurs our view. This concise role description helps us to investigate how the settlement functioned within the economical and transport network in the Euregio and brings lots of research questions. I've tested this approach on, for instance, the 4th century late Roman Castellum of Maastricht and it functions. It helps us to understand. More examples are available, but cannot be presented in this short presentation. I would like to mention, on the Merovingian period, graves, saints, and minting. On early Christianity, St. Savasius of Tongere, Lambertus of Maastricht, and the moving of the bishop sees between those cities. And on the industrialization of the Euregio Meuse Rhine, the relationships between Liège, Aachen Stolberg, Maastricht, and Verviers. Dear colleagues, what's next? I hope I explained in short the way in which Terra Mosana will bring new storylines, which will be combined with new 3D scans, new 3D reconstructions, and new 3D models. Terra Mosana will newly describe the relationships between the archaeological remains and the historical sources, cities, and settlements. What is necessary to achieve the expected results? Discipline and selection and above all, distinctiveness. Reduction of information is, always, is not easy and always disputable. But we need discipline, we need a whip. Intense collaboration is needed with the surrounding areas and cities. We need their knowledge and their data. And an open mind is needed, but also a warning, and that is what we learned today. Every selection is a form of interpretation and a step away of our prim primary data. Dear colleagues, thank you for your attention.